All right. Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started with the hearing tonight in public meeting. A welcome to you all. My name is Jim Ostrowski and I work in Eagles Environmental Support Division. I'll be the moderator for tonight. Uh, right now, it looks like we've got about 18 people logged in. and I'm sure we'll have a couple more join us. So welcome to our public hearing on the submission HNZ G65V DRCBW uh, from applicant Brian Johnson and his parcel on the Turkey Creek Trail in Indian River. So glad you could be here with us today. Uh, just a couple things in terms of our agenda for tonight. Um, like I said, I introduced myself, Jim Ostrowski, and I'm uh, here presenting from East Lansing. Uh, the rest of our panelists I'll introduce in just a moment, and uh, they're from various places in Michigan as well. Uh, so we will start with a short information session after we do introductions. Uh, we'll have the applicant come up and do a, we'll unmute the applicant's microphone and let uh, him do a, a short summary of the project. After that, we'll take a few minutes for some questions and answers. It's a pretty informal type of time at that point, where if you have questions, you can pose them uh, and we'll try our best to answer them. Uh, after that, what we're going to do is start the official hearing. So. The way it happens is that we start out with just informal Q&A and presentation, and then we start the hearing. Uh, when we start the hearing, you will know because I will tell you, and that's when you can submit your official comment for the record. Um, up until that point, it's just basic informal type of stuff. Um, but at that point, you can do your official comment, and uh, we'll have uh, Brian read off the, the, uh, the, the statement, the hearing statement, and let you all know how to do that. And after that, after we take comment from everyone that wants to make comment, we'll close out the hearing. That's basically how it works. So with that, I'm gonna have our panelists that are with me today, go ahead and turn your cameras on. I'll have them introduce themselves. So Joe, I see you there. If you wanna introduce yourself. Sure, yeah, I'm Joseph Haas. Please call me Joe. I'm the Gaylor District Supervisor with uh, Environment, Great Lakes and Energy Water Resources Division. I supervise field staff in both the Cadillac and Gaylor field offices. Um, have, I think, uh, nine direct reports, uh, field staff and admin staff that report to me. Um, we oversee um, uh, statutes that cover Great Lakes, inland lakes and streams, wetlands, sand dunes, floodplains. Um, and I'm sure there's a couple others that I'm, I'm missing, but uh, you get the point. Um, the, the main one I think we're talking about here is part 301, the Inland Lakes and Streams Protection Act. Um, and uh, Brian Marshall is one of my direct reports, and I'll hand it off to Brian. Good evening, everyone. Um, like Joe said, it's Brian Marshall um, covering the Sheboygan County and the project at hand, also covering Segal County and Presque County for the northern districts, um, overseeing the Inland Lakes and Stream statutes, wetlands, and Great Lakes. All right. Thanks, Brian and Joe. Um, so that's introductions. Now I'm going to allow uh, Brian Johnson, he's the applicant. I'm gonna find Brian here and unmute his microphone so that he can do a short presentation. Um, Brian, are you there? You should be able to unmute yourself. I got you logged in twice, Brian, so I'm not sure which one is you. I'll unmute you on both lines. So Brian, are you there? Yeah, good. I'm here. Okay, good, good. So um, at this point in the in the meeting, uh, we're gonna give you some time to go ahead and do a quick uh, summary of what you're proposing. And I've got your slides here. So when you want to change slides, you just let me know and I'll go to the next slide, okay? Yeah, definitely. All right, so you can uh, go ahead, you can go ahead and go. I'm not sure where you want me to start we're uh i'm i'm a quarter interest owner of lot l and the four of us are looking to put a boat well in so we could each have our individual dock space um it's a it's an association lot it's only for four people um i don't know if you got a slide of the the drawing showing the layout so there's the location okay it's location you want me to go next slide yeah. There's the location. All right. That's the survey. OK. 
Okay. So we'll go to the next one. All right. So that's the that's the general layout and aerial view of the, the lot we're working with. It's uh, currently looks just like that. It's cleared. Uh, no stumps on it anymore. And you can go to the next one. So that's our plan right there to to cut out 30 feet in and 160 feet wide and have five docks across there for the four of us. Um, the only reason the fifth one was proposed is for guests. If we have a, a friend that comes over that has a boat, at least there's another uh, another docking space. So um, I think some people misunderstood and thought we were renting a dock space out there, but it's strictly for us four owners. So you can go on to the next one. Oh, that's all the slides I have. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I mean, it's uh, any questions? Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah. So well, that's pretty uh, straightforward. I guess what we'll do now is we can open up for questions from our attendees. And like I said, looks like we got about 20 people logged in now for the meeting. Um, so if you have a question about this project, and again, right now it's just open questions and answers. If you want to make an official comment on this for the record, you're going to wait until we open up the comment period. Right now it's just basic questions and answers. So if you have a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand um, by clicking the raise hand icon. If you want to submit it in writing, you can um, type your question in to the question answer box. Uh, looks like we do have one person on the phone calling in. Uh, if you're on the phone and you want to ask a question, you hit stop. If you, you hit star nine, hit star nine in your phone, and that shows us your hand is raised. So, um, you know, Brian, what's going to happen is that we'll I'll read off the questions, and I'll let Brian Marshall um, here at Eagle take them. And if he's got something he wants to defer to you, he will do that. So, um, I'm going to go to the first question we have that's already come in here. Um, it says. The Sheboygan County Zoning Ordinance for Shared Access has lot dimension requirements. What is the square feet area of the lot with frontage? Brian Marshall, do you want to? Yeah, so I believe this is a 250 foot wide lot. I'm not sure the exact depth on it. Um, if Brian, uh, the other Brian, Brian Johnson wants to, if he knows the formal dimensions of that. Um, if you could provide those, that would be great. Yeah, it's about 6,000 square foot, the lot is. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, has the applicant talked to Sheboygan County Planning and Zoning about the proposed project? Yes, I have. Okay, and that's Brian Johnson. Yep. Um, okay, so looking at my attendees here. Looks like we got a couple people with their hands up. Uh, first one is uh, Jennifer McKay. Uh, Jennifer McKay, I'm going to unmute you so you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, so my my question is actually a threefold question. Um, and so the first is, what was the legal mechanism in which four property owners came to own the 250 feet of frontage collectively? Um, was it a, an easement, a covenant, a, a common element in the condominium, the association development? Um, the second part of that is what rights were specifically granted through that legal mechanism? Um, was it just to the common area? Was it water access dockage specifically? And then the third part of the question is, um, can the legal documentation be provided to Eagle and interested parties um, such as myself? And I should have introduced myself, I apologize. Um, I'm the policy director at SIP and the Mint Watershed Council. Um, and, and so myself and others in order to fully assess uh, the proposed project. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. I'm gonna let Brian, Brian Marshall, you'll take the ticket first. And if it's something out of scope of this meeting, then you, you let us know, okay? Yeah, it's, it's briefly out of the scope of the project. Um, I do know we have um, had conversations with the, the local zoning and different things on this project. Um, just brief conversations overall. Um, not knowing the exact details of how four became 
entitled or got access to the lot or anything. Um, I guess if, if it's open and willing, I, Brian's open to uh, answer that further if you'd like um, at this time, I got. Yeah, I can answer uh, some of that. It was that common lot was created with the development mm -hmm. of the other four parcels. Um, that was the mechanism for four people to have a quarter interest in it. And then the, uh, the lot is owned by Turkey Creek Land Development Association, which, which us four are the, the managing members of. I don't know if that helps. And what was the other part of your question, Jennifer? Um, it was uh, what rights are, were specifically granted and then can the documentation be provided to Eagle and or just uh, the Watershed Council? Uh, when you ask what rights were granted, uh, a quarter ownership of it was granted to each of the parcel owners in that development. Um, outside of that, I, I guess I don't understand what you mean. But yes, I can provide any any information that I have, I would be glad to share. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, another person raised their hand um, for a question, Judy Burgoon. Uh, Judy Burgoon, I just unmuted your mic, so you should be able to unmute yourself on your end. Judy Burgoon, uh, there you go. Yes, when these slides were presented, they weren't visible to us. Did you share the screen with everybody? Should be. Um, could you guys all see the slides, uh, Joe and yeah. Brian? Yeah, well, I okay. could see them. Hmm. All we saw was Br uh, Brian's name. It might be a screen setting on your own machine. Um, we could go back quickly and, and view okay, them. Okay, now already... it's showing. Hold you on. see it now? Okay, I'll just flip through them really quick here for for you guys. So this is the first one, right? Uh, Brian Johnson, you're saying on the uh, location. Then this, yep, the project location a little bit closer. And then the next one's uh, just the survey that we've had done of the parcel. And the one after that would be the uh, an aerial view of the lot, the way it stands right now. And uh, the next one's the layout of the docks. There should have been one more too, kind of showing a, a side view with the, you know, the the taper and the riprap. And I don't know, maybe that yeah, one uh, didn't I make it I ended up view. leaving that one out, just primarily going with the, the top view to keep it relatively simple. If this is the overall proposed activity for everyone. All right. Could you go back to the aerial view? Did you have a question on this one? I'm sorry. Well, I was just trying to get a better fix on exactly where this is in relation to the woods. So I'd say one more fork back, or I guess up. This one? Oh, that one right there. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. Thank okay. you. Okay, does, does that discuss? Okay. Thank, thank you, ma'am. All right. Um, one moment, please. All right. So looking at my question box here, it looks like someone's got a question. I think you answered this already in your presentation. It says, if only four owners, then why do you need five docks? Two docks would handle four boats for four owners. And I'm going to go back to yeah, that picture. I have, I have two boats myself and a jet ski. And... I don't use them both at the same time, but it would be nice to have them on the hoist there. And then I also, I know that two of the other owners both have two boats. Um, so, you know, if, if we each had a dock and we could have two boats on the dock and possibly one jet ski next to it, it'd be more usable. That's, that was the reason. And the, the only reason, like I said, the fifth dock was there for, for if we have a guest, you know, I have a guest come for the weekend, they bring their boat they might want a place to park it for the weekend. Uh, really that, that fifth dock could go away and we could use the boardwalk for that. I mean, if, if need be. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, looking at my attendees, uh, Paul Michael has got a question. Uh, Paul Michael, I just unmuted your line. You should be able to unmute yourself and you can ask your question. All right, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Uh, you know, and, and uh, Jennifer McKay asked a question about about the lot itself, and I don't think this has been brought up. I mean, that is that is lot L. It's a it's a plotted lot with deed restrictions. Okay, and and one of the deed restrictions are, and I'm going to read it here. It says. Uh, buyer agrees that the use of this land is limited to single family residential purposes. And there's specifications about the, the building size and artesian wells to be capped and so on and so forth. But that particular lot is, is deed restricted for a single family home. So Brian Marshall, do you want to address that in terms of the scope within this particular he hearing and how that applies? Yeah, so the primary scope of the project here is we're looking at the, the impacts that this project could have to the the water body itself, the canal, the canal is connecting with Burt Lake and then associated riparian rights to that aspect also. Um, so kind of getting, talking about the different zoning aspects of it does start getting beyond the scope of the, the project and review at hand here. Yeah, would that be something that would be covered more by local zoning officials, correct? Yes, yes correct. That, that, that's correct. Okay. That's a, that's a local unit of government issue. Yeah, so I think that's more where that question would be more, more uh, applicable as opposed to this particular uh, application hearing. Um, I've got to move on now to our next person with a question. Uh, hand raised Susan Shirveni. I got your name right. Susan Shirveni, you can yes. go ahead. Um, my question is when they cut all the trees down on the slot, it was, I would say, semi heavily wooded. Um, they had no curtains in place and when they started, we really didn't know what was happening over there. And my question is, what steps are being taken to preserve the integrity of the plant life and wildlife in the canal? That's my question. Thanks. We have a lot of um, different kinds of fish, turtles, um, just all kinds of things, snails. And as homeowners along this canal, we've always tried to preserve the integrity of the canal. And, and I wanna make sure that happens. Yep, and that's all part of the scope of the review of the project is to, okay, what means, and it, I think it wasn't uh, mentioned, but in addition to the proposed upland cut, they're proposing to slope the, the banks so that they're more stable and line those with like a geotextile fabric and place stone over top of them. So it does, like you mentioned, pr help protect the integrity of the project, of the, of the water body itself. Just, just so we all know that we're not, when it comes to preserving the integrity of the water, it's not just Plymouth Beach Canal because this water will get out into the lake. So, so we know that and that will be preserved, the integrity. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And Brian, did you want to comment any more on, you know, in terms of, Deb, you know, Eagle's review and how that's, how we yeah, and that's see that? Like, like I mentioned that the primary review that we will look at the potential environmental impacts of this project, um, which would include some of the questions that you brought forth. Okay, thanks, Brian. Um, next person with a hand up is Alex Bauer. Alex Bauer, I just unmuted your line, so you should be able to ask your question. You can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, I had just sent you uh, the same question um, in your Q&A, but um, so 
our canal maintenance, um, each lot owner pays by uh, lineal footage. And, you know, we have one family per lot. So lot L is gonna have all this activity, you know, if, if all this goes through five boats, boat docks, 10 boats, maybe more. And- 10 boats, maybe more? Well, you, you said two boats per dock. You have five docks, there's 10 boats. Am I not seeing that correctly? So, um, so as yeah. far as canal, canal maintenance, we pay by the foot. So each, you know, I have an 80 foot lot. I pay, uh, $80 for that. So you're going to have four owners on lot L with increased activity. You know, I have one boat. Most people have one boat, maybe a wave runner. That's a normal for the canal. So if we have, you know, all this activity down there and these four owners will only have to contribute the footage of lot L, it just seems like it's unfair to me to, to have use of the canal and just contribute, you know, that, that amount for having up to 10 boats. So thanks for your question. Um, I think it'd be a, probably best of either Joe or Brian Marshall here explain exactly what we're trying, what we're looking to address here in this particular permit hearing as it relates to not addressing zoning issues or lot issues, but environmental impact issues. Could, could you guys just be clear on that? So, so I think we're getting a lot of questions related more towards zoning issues. And could you guys kind of clear that up for us? Yeah, let me start, Brian. I think, so our review is, we're reviewing the possible effects of this project on the waters here and the potential impacts um, on, this, uh, on this to the lake or uh, the canal which connects to the lake. So there's, there's a public trust issue with the water. Um, I thought I heard the words um, riparian rights. There's no riparian rights associated with um, a canal or any of the cuts in here, you don't you don't build yourself riparian rights by connecting to Burt Lake. Um, you've got to be a lakefront owner to to have, be afforded uh, riparian rights. But that's that's less of an issue, I think, for the discussion. So uses for recreation, fish and wildlife, um, at local. We do consider local government regulations. Um, so you know, if the locals do have issues that can be considered uh, in our permit review. Um, commerce and industry, those sorts of things that, that aren't going to really pertain to a, a situation like this, but it's really strongly on um, the, the water quality and uses for uh, fish and wildlife and recreational uses. I don't know if you want to add anything, Brian. I think that covers it pretty well, like you said. Yeah, so I guess to clear up my question too about, and everybody, a lot of the questions are coming in, so if someone has an issue related to zoning or something like that, that's something that if they make a comment during our hearing, does that affect the outcome of this? Or is that something that's done, overseen by a totally different government body? Um, right. How, right. How is good, that? right, good question, Jim, because the, the, we're, then, then it makes us aware of it, but we, we need to hear from the local government the, the a local unit of government who has authority over whatever particular issue is at hand. We need to hear them uh, object or uh, not object. If, if they stand stand mute and, and are silent, um, we would presume they have no objections. But if they have an issue, if, if uh, for example, the deed restriction issue is a problem for the local unit of government, um, if they provide us with uh, a letter of objection and then that it's up to them to work to resolve that. Uh, but we would, you know, certainly uh, consider that during our project review and would try our best to hold the permit decision as long as we legally can to allow the locals to sort the issue out with the, with the project proponent. Thanks guys. Um, I'm gonna just get hit some of these questions. We got a bunch of questions that came in through our question box here. Um, one, one of them's 
uh, related to should it be approved, what would stop all the other residents in our association to obtain permits to provide multiple docks for residents and guests? Uh, how does Eagle handle, I mean? Right, and that's one thing that is brought into consideration is the cumulative potential impacts of a project like this. Um, so that is something that is looked into during the review process. Um, and as you know, this is required a permit to, to do this type of activity. So it would be each person's due diligence to go through that process as we are tonight um, to obtain a, a permit to do such activities. Right. Uh, another person is asking, has this study been completed by Eagle or an environmental group on the impact to the, to the additional, to the addition of 10 more boats within the canal? That's a tricky issue. We don't, we, we don't do like a carrying capacity study for a canal or something like this. I mean, what's Burt Lake, like 17,000 acres. Um, you, we, we just don't have, you know, you would have to have an immense impact to directly impact Burt Lake. This is a, a, an impact to this small canal and we don't do that kind of a study. That's gonna be something that, um, again, the locals are gonna uh, have to figure out a, a way to regulate. We, you know, our environmental assessment will uh, consider adverse impacts to the public trust, repairing rights, which again, aren't, aren't an issue in the canal um, and, the, and, we, and the environment. So we, we are looking that that uh, public trust impacts and impacts to the environment are minimized to the greatest extent possible. Um, beyond that, uh, we would also be looking into feasible and prudent alternatives. What is what could be considered a feasible and prudent alternative to comp accomplish the same goal here uh, that would minimize impacts? Um, so those will be considered in our review. Um, I I think this this. Uh, project proposal meets the definition of a marina, um, which might um, might kind of make you think of a commercial marina, but uh, our definition definition of a marina is very broad. And I could probably read it to you if I could find it real quickly, but um, it basically means providing a service to members of an association is considered a marina. And I think that's what we're going to end up with here is, is a marina uh, review, which doesn't mean it's that much different than than if it were, say, three docks being put out or a smaller cut. Um, it just means that if they're that the the review is considered a marina and will incorporate a, sort of a footprint plan um, as far as whatever might be permitted, and they'll be allowed to arrange docks within that cut footprint um, if if it is in fact permitted. Um, that's kind of generally in, in a little high level overview and it might kick off a whole bunch of more questions, but um, uh, that's how we'll view it. All right. I'll just briefly add to it that I did um, myself go out there and evaluate the site, um, kind of with these applications, the number of them, we get kind of a snapshot view of the proposed activities. Definitely do aerial reviews of what's been there historically and try and get a, a broader picture of what's occurred here over the years. But again, we're kind of given a, a snapshot or a couple snapshot views when we do site site uh, visits and evaluations that way. All right, thanks. You guys answered a couple other questions that were in here too. Um, has Eagle analyzed the effect of the 30 by 160 cutout of the existing canal, especially as related to dredging at as it relate as related to dredging at the end of the canal? Yeah, that's all part, again, the part of this review and as the process that we're working through right now is um, the public hearing is part of that process of gathering the information that's at, potentially not privy to us um, or the or even the owner themselves um, to bring forth to review the project. And that's we're going to be looking at what is that impact going to be to that body of water. All right. I'm um, going to time for a couple more questions before we have to move to the official hearing. So I want to get to a couple people who haven't had a chance to ask a question yet. Um, John Kayser, John Kayser, I'm going to um, unmute your line. So you should be able to unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. My question is water quality. Canal is a rather stagnant body of water. The surface moves through the winds. 
you put 10 boats or eight boats and a couple of water sleds down there, we're inducing, you know, exhaust and gas and oil waste. Um, has Eagle taken a look at the potential detriment of that kind of pollution to our canal? That's it. Okay, thanks. I'll let Brian Marshall address that. Thank you. Yep, so you're talking about the overall kind of the, the water quality aspects of the additional boats themselves that would yes. create. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I think that's, again, something that's uh, really somewhat looked at um, and is, is part of the review questions we were asked as to will this meet water qual quality standards. So again, I believe that would be wrapped up in part of the review of the application. Yeah, so it'd be part of the actual review that you're going to be doing, right? Correct, yep. Okay. Uh, next person, uh, Michael Turisk. Michael Turisk, you can um, unmute your line if you'd like and ask your question. Go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, again, this is Michael Turisk. I'm the director uh, for the Department of Planning and Zoning for Sheboygan County. And I did pose a question, a written question and I can't recall, perhaps it was Brian that essentially answered it. My question, my overarching question is, does Eagle consider this a marina? And uh, in the county zoning ordinance, we do have marinas as a listed use in this zoning district. We don't have a definition for a marina, but in talking to our legal counsel, what it boils down to from our perspective, from a permitting perspective, is if Eagle is going to consider this a marina, you know, even given their apparent broad uh, definition of such, that would trigger the need for the property owners to submit a special use permit application. Special use permit application would be reviewed internally and then would be scheduled for public hearing uh, before the Sporting County Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, so I want to, uh, you know, establish that. It sounds like, again, I don't necessarily want to um, paint anyone in a corner, but it sounds like Eagle, given the scope of work here, is considering this a marina. And it's been uh, my direction to, given that, uh, require a special use permit given the scope of work that uh, is being proposed by Mr. Johnson here. You want me to take that, Brian, since I sure. I opened the marina can of worms? <laughs> I, do we do? I think this does meet our def definition of a marina in part 301. Um, and I can kind of paraphrase it. It's a facility um, owned or operated by a person uh, that offers service to the public or members of the marina for docking, loading, or other servicing of recreational watercraft. So it's a very broad definition. And a lot of people will always argue that we're not a commercial marina. We don't allow you know, the public to come through. It doesn't need to be a commercial facility. Um, it's it's the offering services to members. So you've got an association here I think it would meet the definition of a marina. All right, thanks. And um, I know, uh, Michael, so you had some other questions that you did uh, submit into us to one being, you know, has a soil erosion and sedimentation pollution control permit application been submitted for review? Have you guys seen one of those for this project? That would be all obtained at the county level um, through the soil and sedimentation um, under part 91. It's not something you have seen, though. Correct. I have not seen okay. one. And, and uh, you know, perhaps Mr. Johnson can elaborate as to, you know, with whom he had talked to at uh, the county Department of Planning and Zoning, but I did not speak to Mr. Johnson. Perhaps he spoke to uh, one of my colleagues, but I have not spoken to him about this project. So, um it, it, it sounds like that uh, he and I need to have a discussion and soon regarding this. And I, but, but, but before I forget, I'm wondering if now is a good time to pose the question uh, regarding 
um, what is the um, time window for uh, breaking ground, if you will, and completion for this project if it were to be approved? All right, thanks, Mr. Turris. And um, I'm gonna mute your mic so we can go to, to answer that question and have one more person ask their question. So, um, Brian, you wanna take that? Either you or Brian Johnson, what's the timeline? I believe the initial, initial timeline was to work on this uh, project this fall. Um, as if things all went through initially, that's what was indicated in the application is to accomplish it yet this fall. Um, but I'm not sure I would assume probably throughout the, once the permit was issued, it would be likely this spring. And Brian, definitely correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's exactly it. That's uh, We're just planning on by next summer to be able to have our boats in there and not just tie them up to the shore. And I mean, if <clears throat> that's the goal. Okay. Thanks. Um, I want to let one more person with their hand up ask their question before we go to hearing because we got to get this moving. But I'm going to let um, Aaron Dubois, um, you've had your hand up for a while. I'm going to let you ask your question. Uh, Aaron? Uh, yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you. Um, so my name is Aaron Dubois. Um, we um, do have a property in, you know, we have a, a house up there um, on Plymouth Beach in the association. Um, and I wanted to um, understand if the applicant did get a permit to clear the lot and actually remove that green belt. Um, we've talked a lot about that already, but I, I've not heard anything about the permit for removing, you know, clearing that lot and removing that green belt that I thought was supposed to be by the waterways. So under under our st the state statutes, we do not have one of those. So that's kind of again outside of the scope of the, the project and the what we're reviewing here today. So no, there's no permit that had that would have had to been obtained from Eagle. Correct. Right. So not that you're aware of. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, we've got several other questions that have come in. I'm gonna. What we're going to do is I'm gonna uh, provide their question report to uh, Joe and Brian here, uh, so they can look over them. If, you know, if they need to respond back or anything later, they they can do that. Um, but at this point, what we have to do is move on to the hearing part of our um, of our meeting to today. So. I want to thank uh, Brian Johnson for presenting and being available to answer questions from attendees here. Uh, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower all our hands and we're going to move on to the next part of the hearing of the meeting, which is the actual official hearing, which I see a lot of you had what I may consider comments put in the question box. So this is at this point is where uh, we'll actually take comments that will be for the record uh, that we'll be um, responding to and addressing uh, in the, its application. So, uh, Brian, uh, do you want to go ahead and read the official hearing statement and we get moving on with this next part of the night? Yep, I believe that we can do that. Okay, thank you. All right, so again, uh, Thank you everyone for attending tonight. Um, my name is Brian Marshall, the district representative for the Water Resource Division, Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. Um, I will be serving as the hearing officer for the um, public hearing for submission HNZ G, G65V DRCBW. Um, with me tonight will be also being a hearing officer is Joseph Haas, the district supervisor. Um, I'm gonna briefly describe the how we're gonna work through the public hearing, background information like we've just done, then I'll describe the purpose of the hearing, which is to gather comments, and then outline the procedures under which we'll take the comments, and then after tonight's hearing. It will then be time for you to provide the comments, and we'll spend the majority of time tonight listening to, your, to those comments, and at the end of the hearing, we'll provide a short closing statement. Uh, by way of background, the Water Resource Division is responsible for administrating a variety of programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and Great Lakes. 
The, pro the programs regulate certain activities such as dredging, draining, filling of an inland lake or stream, wetland or constructing a dam, marina, placing shore protection or constructing permanent docks and building and designated critical dunes, wetlands or floodplains. The law governing those responsibilities is the Natural Resource Environmental Protection Act of 1994, PA 451 as amended Act 451. We are here tonight because Brian Johnson, Turkey Lake Creek Land Development LLC has proposed the following activity to excavate a 160 foot wide by 30 foot deep or long boat well in the uplands of an existing canal off Burt Lake. The sides will be constructed um, with sloped and with the geotextile fabric with eight to 12 inch angular stone placed over top of them to erosion and stabilize the slopes. Additionally, it is proposed that to place five seasonal four foot wide docks and a 12 foot seasonal dock on each side of the hook of each side of seasonal docks. In order for a permit to be granted, Eagle must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet certain criteria under part 301 in the lakes and streams of Act 451. In general, we must consider the effect on the proposed project on the canal and Burt Lake. When reviewing the, an application for permit under the provisions of part 301 of 451, Eagle may, is charged to make the following considerations as required by 30106 of part 301. The department shall issue a permit if it finds that the structure or project will not adversely affect the public trust or riparian rights. The department shall not grant a permit if the proposed project or structurally would unlawfully impair or destroy any waters or natural resources of the state. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give everyone interested in the proposed project submitted by Brian Johnson an opportunity to provide information that Eagle can use in making the decision whether or not to issue a permit. Please recognize that Eagle can only use the information provided if it relates to the criteria that Eagle must use in making the, a decision. Some of you may simply want to express your support to the project, support or opposition to the project, and we'll, we'll happily make note of your position, but please understand the Eagle by law is not allowed to base our decision on whether or not there is a widespread support or opposition for the project. In just a moment, I will outline the procedures in which we will use taking your comments. But before I do so, I need to mention that the notice of this hearing was published in the Sheboygan Daily Tribune on October 27, 2020. As we discussed at the beginning of the information session, if you have a comment to provide, click and hold your hand icon at the bottom of the screen, or if you're using a phone, type star nine to raise your hand. To ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we will use the following steps. First, the applicant has already had an opportunity to describe the proposed project. Second, we will call those who have indicated they would like to speak in that general, general order received. If you have written comments or materials that you would like to present, please email them to me, upload them into my waters, or send them to the Gaylord District Office via US mail. When all comments have been completed, we'll ask if anyone else would like to speak. When your name is called, your microphone will be unmuted. As you begin your comments, please state your name and any group or association that you represent. Each person will given, be given a rough three minutes to make your comments. And I will indicate when you, you have approximately 30 seconds remaining and to begin to start wrapping up your comments. If needed, I will indicate the time has ended. I ask all to be courteous and respectful one, one another tonight. Only one person shall be speaking at a time. Please do not inter interrupt the speaker and please also recognize that Eagle staff are here tonight to provide a fair opportunity for, the, for you to express your comments on the provided project and to listen to those comments. This hearing is being recorded 
and your comments will be part of the information Eagle will consider in making the decision of whether or not to issue a permit on the proposed project. The public comment period for this hearing is open for 10 days from the date of this hearing ending on November 15th, 2020. Additionally, information and comments submitted in writing during the 10 day public comment period will also be considered in Eagle's decision. Additional information and comments may be submitted to uh, myself, Brian Marshall, to the Gaylord District Office at 2100 West M32, Gaylord, Michigan 49735. Following the close of the public comment period, Eagle will make a decision on whether to issue a permit for the project as proposed or with modifications or send a denial letter. You may find out the decision by checking Eagle's MyWaters webpage and search and searching for permit submission number HNZG65VDRCBW. Thank you for your attention. Jim will now be calling the names of those who have indicated they would like to make a statement. All right, thanks, Brian. So that's the official statement. Uh, just to remind people, um, I'll be taking comments now. You each got about three three minutes to make your comment. Um, Brian, I don't think we talked about this, but um, I can keep track of time if you'd like, and um, I'll let I'll let you know um, if if when you make your comment tonight, uh, when you have about a minute left, I'll break in and I'll let you know you have a minute left. So so you so you know that uh, when people. Some of you pre-registered to attend this hearing, and when you did that, you had to, you were able to indicate whether or not you make made a you would like to make a comment. I've got a couple of people down here that already said they wanted to do that, and so we'll call you you up first to make your comment. Um, after that, if you want to make a comment, you'll just raise your hand, and I will call on you and meet your line. And um, if you're on the phone, and now we've got a couple of people that are on the phone, if you'd like to make a comment and you're on the phone, you can hit star nine, like Brian said, and we will call you up by your phone number because I can't see your name. So we call it that way. And um, Joe and Brian are gonna be listening in. We're not gonna be commenting or answering any questions you might um, have. We're just listening to your comment, so just to let you know. All right, so with that, um, I'm going to call up our first person that indicated they wanted to make a comment um, earlier, and that was uh, Jennifer McKay. So Jennifer McKay, I'm going to see if I can find your line here, and I will unmute you. So uh, Jennifer McKay, again, please state the association you're with, and you will have three minutes. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, perfect. Um, thank you for holding the hearing this evening um, and a special thank you to Brian Johnson for being here to answer questions. It is greatly appreciated. My name is Jennifer McKay. I'm the policy director at Tip of the Mint Watershed Council. Uh, after reviewing the permit application, the Watershed Council recommends denial of the permit because of the disruption to the aquatic resources is unacceptable, feasible and prudent alternatives exist, and the proposed project is in violation of the local zoning ordinance. To highlight some of our primary concerns, the impact to the public trust and environment is unacceptable. Excavation and dredging of the boat basin can change the properties of the waters in ways that directly impact fisheries, such as decreasing clarity and increasing sedimentation in the near term and altering the landscapes where fish live and spawn in the long term. The boat basin will require maintenance dredging, which disturbs ecosystems by removing and killing critical organisms that play an important role at the base of the aquatic food chains. And changes in those populations can have cascading impacts throughout the aquatic ecosystem. The boat basin can have cumulative impacts. If authorized, other property owners along the channel and along Burt Lake can follow suit. Currently, the majority of properties along the channel rely along traditional dockage. However, if the boat basin is approved, other property owners could choose to pursue private boat basins as well, and Eagle will not have um, a reason to deny those applications. The weed mat that was proposed could prevent growth of all aquatic plants. Aquatic plants provide essential fish and wildlife habitat and help keep our waters clean and healthy. Aquatic vegetation produces oxygen for our waters and provides food, shelter, and nesting areas for fish and vertebrates and wildlife. 
The project purpose is too narrowly defined to limit a complete alternatives analysis. In addition, the proposed project is to occur at the end of the canal. Therefore, installation of seasonal dockage would not prove to be an inconvenience to the other property owners within the canal. Seasonal dockage will have significantly less impact upon the environment and public trust than the, than the proposed project. Therefore, dockage is a feasible and prudent alternative that, need to be, that needs to be pursued. The proposed project is otherwise unlawful and is in violation of the Sheboygan County Zone Ordinance. Per the ordinance, the land providing the shared waterfront access shall be no less than 22,500 square feet in area. And Brian Johnson mentioned the lot was only 6,000 feet square feet. Um, in addition, no more than one dock shall be permitted on the land providing the shared waterfront access, as well, no more than one watercraft slip, mooring, boat horse, or other means of non-temporary anchorage shall be permitted. We will provide written comments that will elaborate on all these points further. Again, we urge Eagle to give careful consideration to the comments provided and deny the permit application as proposed. The other option is for the applicant to withdraw the permit application and make modifications. Should this be done, the modified permit application should also go out for public notice to allow the public to have the opportunity to review and comment on the modified project. On behalf of the board, staff, and members of Tip of the Mint Watershed Council, thank you again for the opportunity to share these comments with you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna to move to the next person. Uh, Judy Burgoon indicated she wanted to make comment ahead of time. So Judy Burgoon, I'm unmuting your line. Judy Burgoon, can you uh, see where you can unmute your line there, hopefully? Okay, so um, I'm not, I don't know if you're able to unmute your line there or not, uh, Ms. Burgoon, but I'll come back to you um, again in a minute. So I just wanna remind people that when I unmute your line, you'll see something pop up on your screen that'll allow you to unmute your microphone or you'll be a little microphone icon on your screen that you can just click unmute. So we'll come back to Ms. Burgoon. Uh, now I'm looking at people who have their hands raised. So again, if you'd like to make a comment, I'm like, I'm going to see here. There you go. So if you'd like to make a comment, there we go. Got that. Uh, just click your raise hand icon and I'll call on you. Or if you're on the phone, click star nine and I'll call on you that way too. So first person with their hand up to make their comment is Paul Michael. So uh, Paul Michael, I am, I am unmuting your line. So you should be able to make your comment. Remember to state any association you're with and you have three minutes. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Paul Michael. I am the president of the Plymouth Beach Association, which we definitely have a vested interest in this. And, you know, there's a number of reasons that we, we, we object. And, you know, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of them don't, you know, don't fall within the range you're looking at. I mean, number one is our property values with having a mini Merida, which is actually going to be kitty corner and across from me. Uh, the increased noise pollution being caused by, by this lots. I mean, this is, we are in a subdivision. Uh, myself and the neighbors and, and my neighbors directly across from the site are full-time uh, permanent residents. Um, you know, I would like to state that the canal is 60 feet wide and it does you know, we do have to do a lot of maintenance on it, especially at, at, at the mouth in the river. Uh, the, one of the things that, that, that also bothers me is these, the proposed project has the boats coming perpendicular to the canal, whereas the majority of the boats in the canal are, are docked parallel to the canal. Now, as I stated, the canal is only 60 feet wide. So as these boats came, come and back out of their boat slips, and turn around, you know, and go to turn it forward. A lot of people have a tendency to give a excessive throttle causing a prop wash. Now this prop wash would sit there and would come up against the property owners on the west side of the canal, which would basically 
make their properties, at, if there's enough of it, unusable. And, and uh, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much what I wanted to state. Okay, thank you, sir, for your comment. Um, moving on to our next person for their comment is uh, Susan Sherveni. Susan Sherveni, you should be able to unmute your line. And again, you can repeat your name, please, and um, go ahead. This this is Michael, her husband. I'm okay. Can can you please I'm, say uh, your name yeah. then and uh, associate you with? Thank you. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm her lower half, but uh, better half, I would say. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, I live on the canal. I am the uh, uh, director or director at Bird Lake Preservation. I also am the chairman of the Tuscarora Township Planning Commission, and I've been working closely with Michael Turist, and he eloquently uh, stated the position that I was going to say, and so did Jennifer from the tip of the Met. But the bottom line is that uh, this is considered a marina, unless you're 350 feet uh, a property, and that's what Michael has told me, Turist. So um, if I remember Mr. Haas said the fact that uh, you would take in consideration any uh, county zoning uh, ordinances. And this is uh, considered a, um, a residential area, not a commercial area. So if you wanna put more than four boat slips in or whatever it allows, then you're considered a commercial piece of property in the eyes of the county. So um, I would hope, I know Mike is a uh, tourist, is, said that he has not heard from Mr. Johnson or Mr. Adams, who supposedly either one of them own this property. We're not sure who's all involved, but uh, they need to make sure that they talk to the county because uh, if they start this project without pro or county approval, uh, they may run into some real problems. So uh, hopefully the uh, Eagle will take in consideration the county ordinances and the zoning ordinances for the lakes and streams also that uh, Jennifer McKay eloquently discussed and Mike Turris brought up too, that uh, you know these things need to be looked at too before the uh, Eagle starts letting them dredge into our canal. I mean, we've all been here for quite a few years. I live here full time and it's been a great area. People all get along and we, we respect each other's boating rights and everything. But since this uh, lot was approved by the county, which they can, it, you can zone you can zone, uh, you know, four lots in the 250 foot lot. That's not the problem. But the problem is that uh, the confusion and the chaos that would cause based on what we've seen so far. So that's my comment. Okay, thank you, sir. And can, can you repeat your name again, just so we have it for the record? Yeah, it's, it's Michael Sherverney. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, next person with their hand up is William Mapes. William Mapes, again, repeat your name and uh, any association you're with. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, this is William Mapes. I'm, I own one quarter interest in Lot L, Turkey Creek. Uh, first of all, just let me say that as far as zoning issues and things like that, I've uh, been very fortunate to have Brian handling most of those issues. I personally would admit, you know, quite a bit of ignorance in the zoning issue. Um, I just wanted to make a couple comments about the impact, environmental impact that the, uh, our project may have on the lot. I heard some mentioning of aquatic uh, life, aquatic vegetation, and some other things. And I honestly think that what we're going to do will not have a negative impact on the environment, but possibly a positive impact on the environment. And um, because the canal has no flow of water about it whatsoever and is sitting stagnant water, I don't believe that the project proposal that we're doing will have any negative impact uh, as far as erosion or any of those other things. I also would like to make the comment that, you know, the, people are talking about the green belt along the front of the property that we had removed. You know, when these people build their houses on their lot, if you look at them, obviously, the green belt has been removed on every piece of property that's been, uh, you know, developed. So, um, you know, I just want you to take that into consideration that, you know, once properties are developed, of course, the green belt leaves the front of the canal. <clears throat> I've heard some environmental 
issues too where people are worried about the amount of boats or uh you know prop wash from bro- boats causing erosion well it is a public waterway and if a guy wants to come down in there and fish in his little boat and spin circles all day long with his motor on they have the right to do it um you know i'll get to saying also that you know i people have these concerns about a marina and maybe it does fall into the uh you know the zoning of a marina but we're not planning on using it as a marina we're you know we they talk about family residences um as far as i'm concerned i am just trying to have a family residence there i have a young daughter and i I plan on being very quiet and just trying to live a simple quiet life there and go fishing what we're really just trying to do is actually increase property value I've heard people talk about the decrease in property value. I I don't see how there's going to be any decrease in property value when we're going to drastically increase the property value of lot L. You have about a minute. Okay. So, um, I, you know, that's pretty much good enough for now. I appreciate the time and I appreciate everyone with their comments and, uh, thank you all for attending. Hey, thank you, sir. All right, move to our next person with their hand up. Um, It's uh, Aaron Dubois. Got your name right this time, hopefully. Aaron Dubois. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, And I am um, Aaron Dubois. I'm a property owner. Um, We have a seasonal property up there. And um, I am, you know, of course, part of the Plymouth Beach Association because we pay dues and we live within the association. Um, I am not any kind of um, officer or anything like that for the association, though. Um, In a lot of my comments, too, um, and I should have been a little bit clearer on that. uh, From my understanding, the Sheboygan County Zoning Ordinance, which is Article 10, under lakes and streams protection does talk about the green belt. And so I, you know, obviously we have a a residential house there and we do have, um, we do have trees and there's um, obviously grass and, you know, in by our, uh, by our property. But regardless, um, you know, my concern and I've raised it earlier on a few of the questions you know, if, if this were to be approved, you know, what, what um, the adverse impact would be for all residents, you know, within Plymouth Beach in the canal, they could, all of us could, you know, go ahead and put in, you know, get permits to put in a, a, a lot of boat docks, um, whether it's for our guests or for our owners, you know, that would be um, probably up to interpretation. But, you know, this to me is definitely to me and my husband, um, we have viewed this as a um, what I consider if you putting 10 boat slips on a residential lot that considers a marina type of of activity. And that should be viewed as such. And I also think it might be um, considered into funneling. You know, when you take a residential property and make it um, with this many boat slips, um, at one point I heard there might be some transient slips. I'm not really sure, but it looks like the permit is only for 10 um, boat slips, which is five docks as presented. Um, So, you know, I have a lot of concern with that. Um, You know, I'm probably not very advert or very... um, (laughs) Uh, have the understanding of what it would impact um, with noise pollution and water pollution of that many more boats. I I can't really talk to that part of it other than, you know, there's a lot, you know, all of us could uh, also do this and make it, you know, and make a very big impact into our, um, our canal there. You have one minute. Um, Okay. One minute. So, the other um, is the nuisance violations. I think that needs to be considered. Um, th- I have not, you know, I don't know exactly all the violations, but there was a picture um, I, that I sent um, when we were up over Labor Day weekend. There was a middle finger uh, wood sign posted on Turkey Creek. Um, and that's just inappropriate when you have families in there. I, I just think that's uh, um, rude and uh, very just, just, just tasteful. Um, and 
but I do think we need to consider this a marina, and I, I do think it would be, you know, very much a zoning um, ordinance uh, violation. So thank you for your time, and I do appreciate you allowing us to do this. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to now uh, call uh, Judy Bergoon. I had you earlier. Uh, it looks like your mic's unmuted. Ju Ju Judy, are you there? Um, yes, I'm Judy Bergoon. I am one of the owners of property on Plymouth Beach, not an officer of the association. Uh, I would like to object to this uh, proposal on three grounds. First, uh, the fact that this meets the definition of a marina is completely contrary to the definition by zoning of a single family residence. The reason to have these uh, zoned as single family residence is to control the amount of activity and traffic and uh, noise and what have you as a residential area. This would violate that sense of it being a residential area. Uh, secondly, I am concerned about the impact on the wildlife, the aquatic life. Uh, this has been an area that is uh, a, a quiet and lovely area or has been in the past and increasing the amount of traffic regardless is going to adversely impact the wildlife. Uh, third, the amount of sheer traffic on Plymouth Beach Road, the canal itself, into the lake. Uh, people may have wonderful, good intentions about living quietly, but once this is approved, it is de facto now a marina, and it allows for an increase in activity uh, tenfold and certainly uh, also opens up the door for other property owners to do the same. Our Plymouth Beach Association has uh, been objecting routinely to taking single family residents and turn them into rental properties. This is the same concept. Uh, it is within the purview of the owners to say these should be single family residences and that this does not meet that definition. So thank you very much for the time. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I uh, just wanna remind people, if you have a comment, you can click the raise hand icon and um, we'll call on you to make your comment. Uh, I also have up on the screen right now other ways to submit your comments. So tonight's not the only time. If you want to submit a comment in a different way, uh, you can send it in writing. You can enter your comment via My Waters and System, or you can send an email to Brian as well. All right. So next person with their hand up is Paul Michael. Uh, Paul Michael, I just unmuted your line. You should be able to unmute. Go ahead. Yes, Paul Michael here once again. Once again, I'm the president of the Plymouth Beach Association. Uh, I did hear a comment about, uh, you know, a gentleman saying that, you know, he, he wanted to live, you know, in quiet in a quiet neighborhood. Uh, I would like to bring up the fact that I mean, I'm not directly across, but Kitty Corner across from this lot, and since the, you know, since this lot has been cleared, taken over, formed into their association. I mean, we have had nothing but, but noise and I mean, dirt bikes running from day, you know, in the spring from night to day. It's all we heard. Uh, right now, if I look across the canal, there was a junk boat that was put right up against the, you know, as close to the, as close to the canal as you could get on, on the high end before it starts to taper. Uh, it was thrown up with a huge Trump fan which are Trump uh, 2020 sign. That part I don't object to, but on the bottom of it, it says F your feelings. Unfortunately, this is not coming in a neighborhood and being a good neighborhood and, you know, going to have a, a quiet 
you know, coming in to be a quiet neighborhood, which we are. So I hope this is all taken into consideration. Because like I said, you know, they talked about, it was talked about increasing their, their property value. Yeah, it'll probably increase the property values of the four out lots to lot L that own part of it, but it's sure not gonna do anything for the rest of us that live across from it. It is going to decrease our property values. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, next person to hand up is Brian Johnson. So Brian Johnson, I'm meeting your line. You can go ahead. Yeah, three uh, yeah, I just want. Yeah, I just want to comment uh, a couple things. The uh, all the Plymouth Beach lots in that subdivision, yeah, they're most of them are eighty foot lots. They have two boats each, or they could have two boats and a jet ski. Someone said, and I don't remember who said that they're most of the boats are parked parallel. There is a bunch of boat wells down that canal, <clears throat> so they're not all parked parallel. So if they're existing 80 foot lots and they have two boats each, they're allowed, and we're 250 foot, you divide that out, that's three of those 80 foot lots there. So realistically, uh, six or more boats wouldn't be any different than what their 80 foot lots are already demanding of that canal. Um, so there wouldn't be any increase in traffic because uh, right now we could use that canal lot and we can park our boats parallel we can anchor them etc we can use it um, so and we're going to it's not going to change the activity if if we want eight boats down there we're going to have eight boats down there is it going to be inconvenient yeah we're not going to just leave the lot go and not use it so regardless the, it will not increase any traffic it's going to be the same number of boats. It's going to make it more accommodating for the other people across the canal when they want to move their boats around. If we have a boat well cut in, I don't want to spend the thousands of dollars to do it, but if it's going to make it nicer and more accommodating, that's what we're going for. Um, there's some possible other options that we could throw out there. Um, I have a couple other other plans that I'm going to submit to Eagle. Um, there's there's other options where I could I could divide those lots and meet the zoning ordinance. And then if there's only two owners per lot, um, that changes the the restrictions for residential use rather than multiple owners on a shared lot. So we could we could do something different. But bottom line the existing lot is 250 feet and we're going to use it for boats period yeah, but one minute it doesn't all right so i just want to comment that that's it uh thank you everyone for for attending um it's nice to hear everyone's comments um uh, again if anyone has any questions they can call me direct everyone has my email my phone number i'm sure in that association uh, with the information that went out. So if anyone wants to chat, feel free to call me. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, next person, the hand raised is uh, Paul Coleman. Paul Coleman, you can uh, go ahead and unmute your line. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead and I repeat right. your name and any association. Right. Yeah, my name is Paul Kuhlman. I have, <clears throat> I don't have any association uh, or any uh, associations other than being members of the local uh, uh, Plymouth Beach Association, uh, et cetera, and a concerned environmentalist. But it appears to be, what, what I'm concerned about is from an Eagle standpoint is that there appears to be a significant deviation on a percentage basis of the amount of cutout compared on, of, the, of the waterfront length on the canal compared to the rest of the properties on the canal. This, the 160 foot they're talking about is a minimum of 64% uh, compared to what is the majority of the other properties on the canal. If as a precedent, Everybody took 64% of their property and cut it out 
I think that would, I don't think we know, anybody knows. I don't think Eagle knows. I don't think uh, anyone knows what kind of environmental difference that would make. What I'm concerned about, therefore, is the precedent that you may be setting by permitting this percentage of the waterfront of the property being uh, cut out into a, into a brand new canal or brand new, excuse me, dockage space. That's my point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. At this point, I'm looking to see if anybody else's hands raised. I do not see any other hands raised. Remind you, uh, if you're on the phone and you'd like to make a comment, you hit star nine and you can uh, indicate you want to make a comment that way. I'll give it another second or two just to see if anybody else would like to make a comment. I want to remind you up on the screen are other ways to submit your comment. If you uh, do not want to make it tonight, it's not too late. You can uh, submit it that way as well. Okay, I'm not seeing any other comments. Um, Brian, Marshall, I'm going to turn over to you and I'm going to allow you to um, I guess read the closing statements then. Thanks, Jim. Uh, thank you everyone for your comments and cooperation tonight. It's greatly appreciated. Um, appreciate the interest in the proposed project and that you took the time out tonight to uh, be here and provide those. As you indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you may submit additional comment, written comments until November 15th. Following the close of the public comment period, we'll consider all comments received and make a decision on the proposed project. Just to remind those that may still want to submit a comment, comments may be submitted via MyWaters, email, or US mail. The hearing is now closed. Thank you again. All right, thank you, Brian. That's the official hearing um, is closed. Uh, so what I have up here is the deadline for public comments, right? It's for number 15th. Um, I think, Brian, uh, I, I will give you everybody's email that signed up today. So if you want to follow up right after the meeting, you can um, and let them give them the direct um, the direct link, I guess, to the My Waters page and a couple other things, just to remind people about where to go for comments, um, like we usually do. Um, again, there's Brian's contact information. So if you want to email him directly or give him a call, you can um, regarding this this project. And uh, with that, uh, Joe or Brian, do either of you have any party comments? I guess. I would. I'd just like to say thanks again to everybody for taking the time out of your um, evening uh, and and commenting and participating. It provides us with firsthand information that we don't receive otherwise, right? That's the purpose of these hearings is to get hearings are to get uh, to get comments from those that are out in the resource and using using the resource and that understand the exact setting and what uh, potential impacts may or may not be there. So uh, again, just appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everybody, like Joe said, for taking your time out tonight to listen in and, and comment. I appreciate those. Um, hopefully you all have a great rest of your evening. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.